lot has changed over the years. One thing that hasn't changed is a common way that otherwise healthy children end up here in the ER. You're about to see a strange kind of collection. So we have the whole range of coins. We have quarters and this one's a dime. We have a couple pennies. It's not so um, rare to collect coins. We have a Mexican coin here. Or pretty pins. What's rare about the items in Dr. Kathy C's collection is where they've all been. It is eye-opening for people to know what kids get into and, um, and helpful for them to know that just these little things can cause problems. These are all things Dr. C has removed from children, things swallowed, inhaled, or shoved into an ear or nose. We have had um, stories of kids who are doing counting projects in preschool with beans, and we've had um, little runs of, you know, kids, two or three kids from the same preschool class with beans in their ears or beans in their nose. Plenty of beans, pieces of pretty confetti, even shards of glass. Ouch. There's glass that was stuck in the voice box, and so as you can imagine, those have sharp edges and can cause a lot of injury. Kids don't seem to be picky about what they'll inhale or ingest. Parents need to know that healthy kids can get into anything that lies around, common household objects. You can see there's quite a variety, but coins take the cake for most popular. The most common things we take out of kids are coins from the esophagus. And, you know, we all have coins lying around the house. They're shiny and they're pretty, and so young kids will tend to put them in their mouths, and it's a normal developmental stage, and sometimes they'll swallow them. That's exactly what happened here. On an x-ray, it's easy to see the once shiny, pretty nickel now residing in this baby's esophagus. It's not quite so easy to get it out. Doctors must go on a search and remove expedition, fishing for something that went where it shouldn't. Nickels, dimes, even quarters are regularly retrieved, usually with very little damage done. It's all still potentially dangerous, though, and very serious. Some things are especially so. The main public health messages recently has been the, the problem with disc batteries. As we have more and more toys that are powered with disc batteries and electronic objects lying around the house, we're always changing batteries out. And those little disc batteries can be really problematic. They can actually be life-threatening. The charge from the battery when it's in contact with a moist surface will actually start to erode through the tissue. And it can cause death. Um, we consider that a, a true medical and surgical emergency. Even somewhat minor things can constitute an emergency. Inhaled popcorn pieces or tiny chunks of nuts can lead to big problems. Here are some beads. This is a bead from the ear. We tend to get little plastic things. This bead was in the nose. Most pieces of Dr. C's collection have been removed from babies and toddlers. Most, not all. These blow darts are kind of a a theme where it's a, usually a straight pin with some sort of um, uh, soft stuff at one end, and those we tend to get out of teenagers and typically teenage boys, um, uh, where they're blowing a uh, dart through a straw or something, and instead of blowing out, they take a deep breath in. There's another blow dart. Dr. C started this collection 20 years ago, and this is only a small part of it. With each passing month, each swallowed ring or inhaled sunflower seed, her collection grows as does the safety message this all represents, a message she hopes everyone will swallow. It tells a story of what kids get into. And it's just nice for people to see the things that kids can ingest or aspirate. Kids who are otherwise healthy are at risk for, for foreign body aspiration, foreign body ingestion, and I think it's important for parents and the general public to understand the risk. Back to esophagus cam. There's that nickel, found at last, and plucked from where it doesn't belong. Yet another addition to Dr. C's growing collection. Dr. C hopes to one day display her entire collection in a public part of the hospital. She wants a visual and effective reminder of what kids can get into and the damage it can cause. When we come back, an update on some of the little ones we met throughout this program, how they're doing now.
For most patients, a few hours is all they'll spend here in the emergency room, but they may remember it for a lifetime. Throughout this special that was shot over the summer, we met several children experiencing an emergency situation. Here's an update on how they're doing now. Three-year-old Peyton is doing fine. The gouge on her forehead that required stitches is healed now. Her mom says she has a small scar slightly visible in her hairline and a good story to tell about her family's vacation to Seattle. Little Alina, who went under in a swimming pool, has no lasting physical effects from her ordeal. She is more afraid of the dark and of being alone, her mom says, but is otherwise healthy and happy. Caleb is still waiting a liver transplant, and his condition has worsened. His family says the waiting can be excruciating, not knowing when or if a liver will become available in time. On a happier note, Caleb recently rolled over and sat up on his own for the first time. He giggles frequently and is a happy baby. Caleb's family urges everyone to educate themselves on organ donation. More than 100,000 people in the U.S. are waiting for a life-saving organ transplant. Some of them are just babies, like Caleb. And finally, we're happy to report that a broken arm didn't slow five-year-old Abby at all. She had to miss swimming lessons this summer, but managed to still climb on playground equipment, cast and all. Abby's cast is off now, and her arm has healed. One thing about an emergency room visit, very few people know ahead of time that they're coming. Fewer still would expect a TV camera to be part of the deal. We would like to thank all the families who allowed us to be part of their ER experience and to share this inside look with you. Thanks also to the providers who work here for letting us capture part of their world. And thank you for watching. Good night. Century of service and innovation. Fisher Communications.